Good morning. This is the March workshop for the Society of Advice. Today, we're going to be talking about getting things done. One of my visions for the society has always been, I wanted to have a place where, a, a, a place, a community of doers, you know, a, a place where we did things. Uh, and one of my fears was always, and those of you who've been around from the beginning know this, like I always had this fear that we were just going to create another place to hide. And we're so good at this, aren't we? I mean, as humans and advisors have their own specific type of hiding, but we're no different than other humans. You know, our our hiding, our favorite place to hide, of course, is compliance. And then we we love to hide behind um, design or or perfect answers. We love to hide. Yeah, we love to hide behind calculators. And so that all led to this idea of like when we talk tactically here, and you've all heard me talk about my allergy to tactics. Um, I, I think I've self corrected a bit. You know, the, of course, tactics are important. I need to know what to do. But tactics are important to me so that I can get to the place, right? We can kind of get them out of the way. We can get all the place because we can hide behind tactics. If I could just read one more book about how to manage my time, I don't actually have to manage my time. If I could just watch one more YouTube video about how to deadlift, I, I it's really awesome because then I don't have to go to the gym. So... The idea behind tactics is to like, yes, let's be really clear about what to do so that we can get that out of the way and, and talk about the stuff that actually really matters. Like at the end of the day, the part of me that I'm most curious about is the part of me that knows the tactics and still doesn't do them. And so that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. What I want to spend a little time talking about is this age old problem of the knowing doing gap. So this, this gap between things we know we should, and, and I'm going to use the word should very intentionally here. I don't mean should from other people's perspectives. Like we've, we've actually picked something that we think we should do. So this is a good should instead of a bad should. I, what I mean by that is I've made a decision that this is something I want to do. Something that would be good for me or the business. And I want to go even one step further. Like, I know how to do it. Like, what is one thing that if you, you, you already know that if you did it. And you're pretty clear about how. And, and by the way, it could be, I want to write a book and I don't know how. So my one thing is I want to figure out how to write a book, right? So now, like, we've broken that down a bit, right? And how do I figure out how to write a book? Well, I do a little bit of research. How do we close this gap? Jeremy, talk about that real quick, your comment. Yeah, I mean, hey, what I've known is like, you know, grit and determination only take me so far, almost regardless of like the the content of what I'm doing, whether it's, you know, physical activities or, you know, knowledge work or, you know, whatever else. Um, I need the, you know, the accountability from hmm. someone, someone else. And so, I mean, I was part of like, and I know you're going to get to this, but like the seven one beta group and like, that was phenomenal. But even before then, like I track all my weekly habits, like internally and like that it was somewhat helpful to get the dopamine check of, you know, checking off the mark. But where it really took off was when my brother-in-law, literal brother-in-law, like started sharing each of our habits like with each other and then like we both just saw exponential consistency like with, within our own habits yeah yeah amazing just thinking about the knowing doing gap is been really powerful for me like what is it about this gap why am i resisting this change i know how to do this how can i make a change well one of them of course there's all sorts of ways to handle that gap but one of them is accountability and what I want to spend the rest of our time together is just walking through this, what we're going to roll out here. So we did, we did a beta group of this thing that we called 7-1, and I better look at my slides because I don't want to. Okay, so what is the 7-1 peer? If there was a slide up right now and you couldn't see me, it would, said, it would say, what is a 7-1 accountability group? So you identify a thing you want to do. Now we've simplified all this down to this idea. Like you identify a thing you want to do. 
you identify it. You self-identify it. Nobody identifies it for you. And then you meet, you, you break that thing down into the next simplest step. You identify what the next step is you're going to take that week. You write it down in a place that everybody else can see it. And then when you meet the next week, you report back on what you did. Okay, so we're just you just meet for seven weeks to focus on one thing, hence the name, 7-1. If accountability is important to you, but you don't want to join a group, like you're going to get some principles out of this that I think are really valuable. If you do want to join a group, we're going to give you a chance. So seven, oh, sorry, one other thing I want to talk about, peers. The research is really clear on this. Peer accountability produces better results than expert-led accountability. When they are peer-led, the results go way up. When they are expert-led, there's actually no discernible evidence that they produce anything of value, <laughs> which is pretty funny given the amount of money that's been thrown into accelerators led by experts. So it's a group of your peers. The facilitator is a peer. And they've got to show up with a thing themselves. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about how this has gone. I know a couple of you are here. As a broad overview, can you just talk about your experience with the pilot group that we did? Jeremy or Brian, why don't you talk about what you called Brian out on? I was I was called out. Um, I got the empathetic punch in the face. Um, and it was awesome. There was a giant group hug afterwards and... Um, I didn't go through too many boxes of tissues. I just had a black guy for a couple of weeks. Um, no, I'm just kidding. The I had um, not realized the extent of how much sometimes I let the tyranny, the urgent crowd out, the importance of the of the things that the thing that I said I was going to do. And yes, it's busy, but we make time for the things we want to do. My phone says I have time. Jeremy said, Brian, at the end of the day, look, you have the time to do what you want to do. Um, you you're you're. I think I only came with that excuse one week. <laughs> That was the, my blocker. I hope it wasn't more than that. Um, but post that, um, I committed to spending 15 to 20 minutes. It wasn't a huge lift. We all have 15 minutes. Um, and checked in with Jeremy and Shauna daily that I was going to commit to that for a week. And that habit enabled me to make significant progress, both through the project and continuation thereafter. Mm -hmm. um, but it was Jeremy calling my bluff. We can always say we're busy. And that's true. The standard reading is, how are you, Carl? I'm busy. Um, well, um, Jeremy would take argument with that anyways. But all that being said, he called me out on that. And I'm grateful. Yeah, and we've got a lot of new members here. So I should clarify that language. Um, we talk often about uh, the work we do with clients. Sometimes clients need an empathetic hug. And sometimes they need a punch in the nose. And w both of those are... I don't know the degree to which they're metaphors, <laughs> but I certainly think the punch in the nose is a metaphor. So all we're saying here is sometimes people need really direct feedback on a place they may be hiding, some place they need an empathetic hug. And I think that's the power of a small group of people who are peers, who are willing to go through this together, because it becomes a place where you can feel safe being honest about inauthentic behavior. Like, how many places do you have like that? Where you can show up and be honest about the fact that you pick up your phone more often than you should and you're going to see an addiction recovery therapist for it. There's not very, I don't have very many places in my life. There's this and, and this. Casey, if you're able to unmute yourself, what's a good one thing? What's the characteristics of a good one thing for this program? So my one thing was being distracted. Um, and I said that mm -hmm. in December and I felt like I was always distracted. The phone, I'm I'm right there with you, Carl. I'm like, this is an addiction, picking up the phone, the number of times I pick up the phone. And I'm even afraid to look at the number of times that I pick up the phone because it's so high. Um, and when I got the invite, I really thought about my one thing. And I realized I'd been delaying writing my book for a year. So I changed it from the distractions to my one thing um, being writing the book. As I started the process, I realized that my distraction was impacting me actually getting the time to write the book. Um, and it didn't help that at the same time that I think 
week two, Carl, you sent a note, um, the video response about my one thing that I said in December was the distractions um, and being better focused at that. Um, so the one thing really is a personal thing to you that you want to work on. And one of the things that I noticed on our calls was we might have started, I think Jeremy was probably the only one who did not change his one thing, but our one thing changed or kind of morphed into the real one thing that we were working on. So it's not hard and fast, set in stone that it has to be the same one thing that you start out with. It was just the thing that was important to you and what you wanted to accomplish over the course of the seven weeks. Yeah, amazing. And Sean, I think that's a normal feeling. So Sean said in the chat, I, I feel like my one thing would be spending seven weeks to figure out what my one thing should be. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, I Here's the way I think about them. Um, if it feels too big, make it smaller. That's a general approach of mine. Like if I'm scared, if I'm scared to do something, make it smaller. If it feels too big, make it smaller. It's pretty simple. The goal of this group isn't necessarily to make best friends. It turns out that that happens, <laughs> but the goal is to get stuff done, right? The goal is to get stuff done. Agree or disagree? Those of you who are in that first group. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. Um, it is interesting. Like I knew what my one thing was coming into, um, into the calls. And so mine didn't necessarily evolve a whole lot, but I had a very apples apples comparison. So I was like creating a new knowledge product and I'd created previous knowledge product, you know, a couple of years prior. And it was dumbfounding me to me to see the increased efficiency of like, because I was reporting in on a weekly basis of like, hey, here's what I said I was going to do. Here's what I actually got done. The total time of like to getting this thing to market was condensed. I should go back and look like specifically, but my guess off the top of my head is is that it was like 50% of the time um, I was, it, it took 50% of the time compared to like the previous uh, knowledge product that, you know, I, I built and launched. Like it was really dumbfounding to me the power of like group accountability because I had a pretty direct apples apples comparison of it. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that action first bias principle number three action first, it's fine if you become friends and, and I over index on this stuff. Like I'm like, dude, let's get some stuff done. And I know I heard from many of you like, man, I feel like I have six, six really good friends now. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for taking the time today. We're super jazzed about this. And um, I, I have no idea what's going to happen. We're super jazzed about it. Cheers, everybody. Bye. Curious about an insight. What insight occurred to you today? Well, I named my one thing in, was it the December call? Yeah. So I pulled up my notes from that during today's call and was surprised how clear I was, was then. I mean, everything I had written, I was like, oh my God, yes, yes, yes. So it was validating, <laughs> maybe energizing. Like, you know, the one thing has not gotten off my list yet. I It's really interesting there. Somebody told me once, I used to be all super precious about writing every idea I ever had down. Because people were like, if you don't write it down. So I had like the notebook by the, the bedstand and the notebook and the thing and the notebook. And then I kind of like, I, 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 somebody finally told me, and this is a quote, so I can use a little bit of farm language. They said, look, Carl, you should stop worrying about that because the good shit sticks. And it is really interesting how that, like the good stuff maybe kind of follows you. You have a moment of clarity, like maybe you did in December and you're like, oh yeah, of course it's still there. Now getting it done is a separate discussion, but Clarity is a huge thing. So I'm glad mm -hmm. that that was your experience. Paul, what about you? What I Any specific insight that occurred from today's call? For Kaylin, I've got to go back and look at mine because I think the three that I was thinking about in my head aren't exactly the one that I, I wrote down. But the insight that I took away was I, I have an assistant that helps me. And I'm thinking back in my mind, I need to ask her if she can be somewhat of my accountability partner and mm -hmm. what you're doing with the groups. I'm wondering if she can do that with me like every week. Yeah. So to me, that was a, that was a great takeaway from, from me today.
Pete, let's go to Australia. Like what, what insight occurred to you today? Uh, those are the things that resonate with me are things I think I can take back to my clients and work with them. Yeah. It's like, if you've got all the tactics in the world, like why doesn't it get done? Yeah. And I think that, that sort of hit hard. Um, and the other big one was, you know, um, not to dismiss what you do, but that peer accountability is much more powerful than expert-led accountability, which I think that's that's the benefit of this community. Yeah. Um, so yeah. many wonderful people in here, and that's, that's the inspiration of, like, you can hear stories of what other people are doing in their sort of businesses. Um, yeah, and it gets you, gets you going. So that accountability, I'm looking forward to that. That's um, pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, Peter, what about you? Insight from today. Yeah, there was a lot that I took from today. Um, kind of one easy one was just because something is simple. The goal is simple. It doesn't mean it's easy. And it goes yeah. back to that first diagram you drew. Like we know so much, but doing it is something completely different. Yeah. And one thing that jumped off the page for me was when you said, I had to write it down, was, you know, we have all these competing things that we want to do. Well, you know what? Get calm, guess, and then just take action. And it reminds me of what you said in the fellowship, right? It's just be less wrong tomorrow. And I think mm. sometimes we put up these roadblocks for ourselves and we negotiate with ourselves the later off the hook. It's just, you know what, just, this is what has to happen right now. It might not be perfect, but I find when I do that, what usually happens is that once I get moving, all mm. the other insights happen, things get easier once I get going. So. Yeah. So interesting. It's uh, like, that's like, seems to be the, I was just thinking about running and climbing and writing and conversation with a friend like all of it it's like what's the small i don't know how it's going to work and we all want to know the the end before we start you know like sometimes i like to use the verb kits us we like we like to kits us things to death you know and and because what why so we can have certainty well it's all a myth and so i think i think like I love the idea of just, can I just be a little less wrong tomorrow? Like, can I just guess and be a little less wrong tomorrow? That's, that's cool. Well, you're amazing. Thanks so much for being a part of this. Cheers, everybody. I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. All right. See you later. See you later, everyone. Okay. Cool. Bye. Thanks, Carl. Thanks. Do you have things that you know that if you did them, they would make a massive difference on your life or your business, right? You already know what they are. And you know they would make a massive difference, and yet you're not doing them. If you're like me, this is a continual frustration. We call this the knowing doing gap. If I were to draw it, it would be like two circles with a gap between them. One circle would be labeled knowing, and another circle would be la labeled doing. These are things that you know. You may even know exactly how to do them. So this isn't a tactical problem, right? Well, the question is, how do we solve? How do we close the knowing doing gap because making the impact in the world that you want to make right and the impact i want to make changing the way that that people feel about their relationship with money and building a business that we're excited about right often the difference between that and what we're currently doing is closing this knowing doing gap and that's what we talked about in this workshop we rolled out this new program. It's really a solution to that problem called, it's, it's peer accountability. We call it the 7-1 peer accountability group. 7-1 peer accountability groups. We rolled that out this month and we talked in depth about it. I talked about the things that I know, right? Like I pick up my phone too much. How do I know? Ah, uh, geez, my screen time tells me. I know that if I stopped picking up my phone that often, my life would be better. My business would be better. My relationships would be better. I know it. I've known it for years. And yet I've been unable to do it. So I talked about the steps I'm taking to do that, just as one example. And other people in this workshop, other people shared what they are trying to change and the impact they're trying to make. People wanted to write books. People want to build businesses. Somebody wanted to make sure that their client intake process was super tight. Like what happens in the first meeting? What happens in the second meeting? So there was a whole range of these things. Some of them were about becoming better humans. Some of them were becoming about becoming better advisors or business owners. I think you're absolutely going to love it. But I don't want you to take my word for it. The Society of Advice is a collection, a community of people who get stuff done, real financial advisors who want to make a difference in the world. 
We meet once a month for 90 minutes. We work really hard to make sure that 90 minutes is massively impactful. Think of the best workshop you could, po the best 90 minute workshop you could possibly attend as a financial advisor. And we do it every month, every month. Now, because it's hard to explain, but easy to experience, what we've done is when you join, your first month is free so you can come check it out. It's not a sales tactic, to be honest. It's an opportunity for you to see if this is a good fit because we only want members that feel like it's a good fit. But here's the math for me, right? $147 a month. What does that add up to? About $1,800 a year. We want to make every single monthly workshop so valuable that any single month will pay for the entire year in terms of its return on the investment that you make. Now, we're not going to get that right every month, right? But that's our focus. So come and see. That's all I would invite you to do. Come and see. Your first month is free. Just go to the societyofadvice.com, join, attend a monthly workshop. You can also see the, the last monthly workshop, the recording of it will be there for you to check out. We'd love to have you. We'd love to have you come see because I know it'll make a massive impact on your life. Cheers.